M doesn't mind you making a little bit of money on the side. Just as long as it's not selling secrets. Enough with the theatrics, Mr. Bond. You're starting to scare me. You've got the wrong man. You really do. I assume you know what happened to my contact. Where is Where is the Contact. How did he die? Not well. I also know where you keep your gun. Don't worry, Mr. Bond. Firstly, Devlog 7 is in good hands, but you will never find it without that contact that you killed. Secondly, I... James Bond. James Bond. Mr. Bond, a martini shaken, not stirred. I presume. No, I'll a Diet Coke. Around two years ago, a man by the name of Harvey Gilman disappeared without a trace. We have some new intel on your next mission. Sir, I believe the iMac is turned off. We've been tracking things, but he always seems to evade us. One step ahead, one loose end after Mr. another. Mr. Bond, this is our weapons expert. Hey. Japan, Moscow, Norway, he's an international fugitive. Americans gave us CCTV footage showing him in a small coastal town near Los Angeles. And this is our only lead. He's potentially dangerous and needs to be stopped at all costs. And they picked me to find him. Let's see the box. Bullets, what is this? He only needs one. What the bloody hell are you boys thinking, bro? Are you a living man? What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Get out of here! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out. Get out. You think I only need one? Flip and bullet, bro! I'm not done with Shit. Damn it. Why do I always forget this? Okay, this is on. This is working. Am I in focus? Hope I'm in focus. I don't want to reshoot this. Uh, yeah, I think I look fine. Okay. All right. Uh, it's been a while since I've done this. Hey guys, we're back. It's been a while. Not as long as the last one. Uh, you guys didn't have to wait three years this time. Only a couple months. Mainly because I was waiting for a certain person to give me some certain voice lines. Caleb. This devlog is gonna be a little bit more chill because the last one was a little much. Working on something for three years and having all of these combating ideas, I really am not happy with the state the last devlog came out in. It was a little all over the place. 
at the time I was experimenting a lot with virtual production, which is really cool and is something I'm still using to this day. Take all that James Bond stuff, for example, but it does not work well for a vlog style YouTube video. Two main reasons. One, it is a lot of extra work and two, it is a lot of extra work. It's fine for doing like little things, but I mean, even the James Bond stuff took me months to actually get done because I'm just one person and VFX is hard to do, but it's fun. This devlog is gonna focus a lot on the entire redesign I've done for the ship system because I mean, seriously, a good space game needs a good spaceship system. And believe me, I have made a good one. Redesigning the ship system has really shown me how to actually make a system scalable in a game like this. The last one was spaghetti code all over the place and was doing game dev crimes. Things like hard casting or having the ship code be replicated in the player controller. It was all over the place. The main feature of having a scalable system is having systems that can actually be separate from one another and still work. The biggest issues with the original system was it was just broken. The code only allowed for one spaceship to be in a scene at one time or else everything would break. And if I wanted to add multiple types of spaceships, I would have to duplicate the code over and over and over. And if I wanted to add any updates, it would be a pain in the ass. I would have to go into the player code, add new variables, change things around. Not fun, and honestly, I saw the writing on the wall that it was not going to work. So I took the time, sat down, and started work on Ships V2. I'm using a system in Unreal called Data Tables. A data table is an object on Unreal that lets me compile basically a list of ships that all start with the same properties. I can change these properties on a per ship basis without ever having to go into the code. Things like the number of engines, what's the max speed, how much damage it can take, it makes things so much easier and really lets me have a lot more freedom when building ships. Something else that I made sure is to remove all hard casts in the ship system. What a cast is in Unreal is it's a direct link in blueprints between two different objects. These can be actors, crates, or anything that you want to send data between. This is good for certain systems, but not good when you're trying to build a scalable ship system. And this was the main reason why I wasn't able to get multiple ships working like at all, and was just going to be a real headache to try to fix. So I use another one of Unreal systems called Blueprint Interfaces. A Blueprint Interface is considered a soft cast. It doesn't need a direct reference to anything. And it means that for whatever reason, if there isn't a player or if there isn't a ship, neither of the systems will break. And it allows me to have multiple ships in one scene. After getting the foundations of the ship system done, I wanted to start adding things that I've been needing to add for a very long time. One of those is fuel. The fuel system is really simple and I don't think I'm ever gonna actually have to go back to it. All it is is it's a number that says, okay, your ship has this amount of fuel, it can only hold this amount, and every time you do something, we take a little bit away. Really nothing too complex or anything to write home about. The same can be said for my current implementation of a damage system. Now, I'll go into more detail about the damage system later, but it's kind of the same concept. We have a variable that says how much damage the ship currently has, how much you can withstand, and anytime you hit something, we check the velocity of what you hit, or the velocity of what thing hits you, and take away damage if that exceeds a certain threshold. Moving away from ships, I wanted to get the elevator that I created last episode actually in the game and actually working. I'm also going to be redesigning this system. I'm just finding the best approach in handling multiple floors. So for now, I use a interpolation function to have the elevator go from point A to point B. Also really simple, but something that's going to be fleshed out way later. It was just really cool to see this piece of art actually moving in the game. Something that I found out about in Unreal is the flying actor component. Essentially, it works the same way as a non-flying actor. It just handles input in actually moving, but without gravity. And honestly, it was pretty smooth sailing for a while. Having the ship smoothly accelerate and smoothly stop, it was really nice. But for some reason, this type of interpolation 
didn't work for certain rotations. When I wanted the ship to roll left or right, or when I wanted the ship to pan around with your mouse movement, there was zero interpolation. I honestly thought that this was gonna be an easy fix because Unreal has many different ways of doing interpolation. There's easing nodes, timelines, and interpolation functions, but none of them have been really working. I ended up over-engineering a ton of systems that would either completely break and glitch the ship out or just do nothing. My current implementation for smooth rolling is still kind of broken and I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it in, but if you have any ideas, please put them down in the comments. I'm trying to figure this out. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or if it's Unreal's fault. It's probably my fault. Also what's weird is the same code applied to the mouse movement doesn't do anything. It just stops. So I don't know. It's also like a lot of code for something that should be kind of simple to do. So again, leave me any suggestions you have for me in the comments or eh, just yell at me. Now I wanna talk about my vision for the damage system. The damage system I have in mind for Paradise is gonna be super realistic and a little bit exaggerated, but to the point where it seems pretty cool. The main ways video games usually do damage is decals, textures, or actual deformation. Decals in this sense are just transparent textures that have any sort of damage on them. This can be scratches, dust, sand, dirt, debris, whatever. And they take this texture and project it onto geometry. This is really good and I'm gonna be using it because it's really simple to do in Unreal, but I want a little bit more. Other video games take entirely different approaches with soft body simulations. Take BeamNG Drive, for example. If you know BeamNG, you know its physics. I'm not gonna be using this because one, Unreal doesn't really have a soft body system, and two, it's really unpredictable. I don't want ships to be like completely flattened and I still wanna have control over how they deform, so I had to find something else. I found out about this feature called blend shapes. Blend shapes let me animate the position of vertices between a base rest position, aka no damage, and like a damage position, aka 100%. It then lets me smoothly blend between the damaged and non-damaged vertices of the actual ship and can be controlled in real time. So it's something I haven't implemented yet, but I know a really good way I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna be showing that off probably in the next video. Another thing we can do to simulate damage is actually messing with the textures of the ship. This can be anything from edge wear to sand building up in certain areas, and I found the best tutorial to actually achieve this. It utilizes the layered material system in Unreal, something I didn't really know about. Simply, I bake out a cavity map in Substance Painter, which is just a black and white image that says, okay, here dirt can build up, but here there won't be any dirt, and I can edit it, I can do whatever I want but it's really, really easy to set up and easy to bake out. I then use this as a mask to actually be able to place dirt, scratches, puddles, sand, whatever, into certain areas of the ship. And this is actually a system I already have working and it honestly looks really good and I'm really excited about it because it also lets me kind of get rid of texel density. My old workflow for ships was I would have one 4K texture for one part of the ship and when you think 4K, you think really high detail, but on a spaceship that's the size of an actual spaceship, you will see those pixels. So having this lets me actually scale up individual textures on the ship to actually have them repeat. And honestly, you cannot tell. It looks so much better than the system I had before, which was just using one material. And I'm really excited to see where this goes. Another important aspect of the ship system is hangers. Hangers will let players refuel their ships, repair ships, or just store ships. And to make it, it was pretty easy. I use the same blueprint interface for interacting with the ship. So when you actually collide with a trigger box that I put around the hangar, the ship knows that it's well in a hangar. It then runs code that will repair the ship and refuel it and honestly it was really easy, but I wanted to work a little bit on the visuals of hangers. Right now I have a pretty basic design for hangers. Um, it's gonna be a lot different later, but it's honestly fine for now. I actually made this pretty interesting material for this kind of energy shield that uses a feature in Unreal called distance fields. What it does is it takes any object that's like colliding with it that can add a little bit of an outline to it that actually makes things look like they're passing through the shield. Moving away from the things that I was working on, I was also starting to worry a little bit about AF Core. Just a reminder, AF Core is the basic framework that helps me actually build up Paradise. 
Without it, I wouldn't have things like player movement, multiplayer, or any sort of networking, even virtual reality. This marketplace asset retails for $300 and honestly was at the time a really smart decision to get. It worked flawlessly, giving me cross-platform multiplayer between VR and desktop and really, really removed a lot of the hassle of game development, which means I could focus on other things like ship systems, game art, or anything I've been talking about. But one thing that I've been really anxious for is to actually upgrade the version of Unreal I've been using. I've been stuck on 5.0 since day one because AF Core has never really gotten an update since then. The devs have stated that they're working on an update and did kind of release a test for 5.2 but it's pretty broken and a lot of features don't work. The main reason why I want to upgrade from 5.0 is that any version afterwards has full Nani and Lumen support in virtual reality, which is important because those are pretty essential features of Unreal that I'm definitely taking a lot of use out of. And not having those means a lot of features of Unreal get lost just because I'm on the wrong engine version. So every now and then I've been taking a look at their Discord server and I'm getting a little bit worried. Most of the devs don't talk on there anymore. Only one person has been doing any sort of updates and their last thing was a couple months ago saying that they can't work on it for a while because I don't know, they're off doing something. This worries me because one, everyone in this Discord server paid $300 for this plugin and two, they have made multiple promises stating that they will work on it. So just makes me a little bit hesitant. And honestly, I might have to just bite the bullet and start working on a framework of my own because it really seems to me that this project might just become abandonware. So I'm not too sure. Hopefully things are gonna change and I can laugh about this in the next video, but it does worry me a bit. So moving away from AF Core, something that doesn't worry me is the new Voxel plugin. Voxels are also an integral part of Paradise and I really wanted to learn their new version 2.0 because they've rebuilt the system from the ground up and I found some really, really good resources online and built out some new voxel graphs that actually have way more realistic looking planets with actual continents and biomes and it's, again, also a lot less spaghetti code for a lot better of an end result. Something I teased in the last video was the redesign of the Nexus G2. This is one of the first models I made when I was actually getting a little bit better at 3D modeling. And to my standards today, it's pretty bad. There's a lot of bad topology in areas and it really isn't gonna work for the idea I have for spaceships now. The main issue is that it's just too small. There's no crew compartment and there would be no way to actually store cargo. So I needed to redesign the whole thing. This model has turned out far better than I thought it would, and I'm really, really excited to show it to you guys. So, I present to you guys the brand new Nexus G2. started this devlog series, that was my main passion. I really, really wanted to make video games, and I wanted to make a video game that was unlike anything I've ever seen before. It was kind of a dream game, if you will. The issue with this is I know Paradise is probably never gonna get finished because just of how big it is. It's never gonna get to the level of Star Citizen or Starfield because I am a 15 year old kid just doing this for fun but I don't really care about that. Paradise has only really been a passion project for me, and for the past couple years, I've never really thought about commercially releasing it. It really just doesn't seem like something that I wanna get into. I still love making video games, and I still love doing devlogs. Believe me, none of this is gonna stop. In fact, I'm probably gonna just keep making more and more of these, but I wanted to kind of change the way that this channel is. For the past couple years, the only videos I've been regularly posting are devlogs, and by regularly, I mean every couple months or so, or years. My interests have shifted a lot, and I really wanted to shift my channel's niche to filmmaking. I really have fallen in love with it, and a couple months ago, I started volunteering at a local TV studio, and I mean, it's just been a blast. I've gotten a lot more involved with people that are just as passionate as I am, and it's something that I really wanna share on the internet. So from now on, I'm gonna be focusing a lot more on filmmaking content. I wanna do a lot more short films, and I wanna just show off different ideas and stories that I wanna tell. 
Again, it doesn't mean any of this is ending. I'm still going to be uploading devlogs, but just expect a lot more filmmaking stuff. If I have time. How are you doing? Doing your best. Vaughn, what's this for, huh? Devlog 7. Oh, it's not for that other thing? What other thing? Don't worry about it. Yeah, I got it right here. All right, check this out, check this out. All right, man. Just to let you know, it's some of my best work. I guess I really am John Wick. It's done. You think they'll ever know? They won't know. Good. I got MI6 off our scent. I showed them that video. How's the jam? Shaken. Not stirred. So, what happens now? I guess we'll never see the real Death Box yet. or something brown? I don't know. Three bloody bullets. <laughs>